Hey guys, thanks very much for clicking on the video. Mike here from PA Outdoors. You're about to watch Palletwood Cabin episode 10, where I build a new project with Dad using recycled pallet wood. But before we begin the episode, I'd like to say a huge thank you to our sponsor for this video, which is Audible. I've been listening to audiobooks on Audible for a few years now. Most of the time I'll listen to Audible in the truck or in the car on long journeys up to different campsites and things like that. But lately I've been struggling to get sleep at night and that's because I'm editing on the computer a lot. I'm always on the computer trying to edit videos. And I've got one of those very active brains and I find it hard to switch off. So what I've found is by listening to an audiobook, maybe an hour or so before I go to bed, it really helps me to wind down and switch off. And with the benefit of being able to listen to a book rather than read it, it's less strain on my eyes and it just helps me to shut down at night. I'm a huge fan of J.R.R. Tolkien, who wrote The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings trilogy. I'm a big fan of those. I've been trying to find books that are as similar or as close to Lord of the Rings and all the kind of Harry Potter fantasy as possible. And it's been fairly difficult, but I've managed to find one lately that's been absolutely riveting. I've been listening to it for about two weeks now, really, just for a few hours each night. It's called The Name of the Wind, and the author is Patrick Rothfuss. On Audible, it's narrated or read by Rupert Degas and the story itself is so compelling. It's one of those that the opening scenes you're just hooked straight away and he's got such a calming voice that for me it really helps me to get to sleep at night. The best part is the main character, he's called Quoth, and it's similar to Harry, it's kind of a mix of Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings mixed into one in the sense that it's about Quoth, this main character, going to uh, like a, a magic university, he's going to university to study magic um, and he's an apprentice almost really. And he learns actually things similar to blacksmithing and things like that. There's also this dark element and this deeper story to it of this dark force that's around. So perhaps you guys may have heard of it. Uh, if you have, let me know. He's written two books of the trilogy so far. The third book hasn't been, there's been an eight year gap and he's still not written the third book because he's trying to write, wind up this story and finish it. There's actually a huge range of genres on Audible as well. Lots of things for the outdoor community. Things like bushcraft and survival, there's books out there on that. So Audible are actually offering you guys, my subscribers, a free 30 day trial and a free audio book. If you go to www.audible.com forward slash TA Outdoors or text TA Outdoors to 500 500 and you can get your free audio book now. Perhaps even get The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss and if you're into the fantasy novels do let me know. But it's not just fantasy books that are on Audible. There are other books that will help you become a better you, a more fiscal you, a healthier you, a way that you can improve yourself. There's a huge genre and different range of books on Audible. So once again, thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. Remember, get your free 30 day trial and free audio book by going to www.audible.com forward slash TA Outdoors or text TA Outdoors to 500 500. There's links in the video description below. Let's crack on with Palletwood Cabin episode 10. Previously on the Palletwood Cabin build. We built a simple picket fence by cutting notches using hand tools. By making the picket fence this way, we maximise the use of the whole pallet. And we can use the offcut as a border for a flower bed. This is also a very fast and efficient way of making a fence. We then fired up the wood stove and cooked up some bacon and eggs to reward us for a hard day's work. I then went out into the woods in search of some natural materials to put on top of the tin roof in the hope that it will help to improve the heat efficiency of the cabin. However, we are still undecided on this area. I am thinking a layer of moss, which would help to insulate the cabin and give it a more aesthetic look. But let us know your thoughts on this in the comments section below. Join us now for episode 10, as we stick with the theme of this pallet wood project and build a raised vegetable bed ready to grow some plants in spring.
Told you that seasoning's nice. No gourmet meal today, guys. We are keeping it simple. Mm. Beans, sausages, some uh, steak spice with, well, pepper and garlic steak spice, really nice. Goes with pretty much everything. We've got lots of building to do today, so we weren't too focused about cooking up a gourmet meal and uh, getting it all looking nice. We just wanted to cook up something that was relatively fast to cook because we are coming into spring soon and today's building project is focusing on a spring well garden really isn't it polytunnel yeah polytunnel and everything stay tuned Hopefully, that's enough to hold it. It's enough to run the water. Hmm. 
Well, it's good it's got that apex, isn't it? Because then it gives it that angle. Mm. Holy cowboy! Oh yes, what I've been looking for. This is what I call. Oh no, it's a piece of fool's gold. I thought I'd discover gold. I thought I got the Klondike of England then. I watched too many of them gold programs. Here we are folks at Badger's Rest and this is our version, our version of a polytunnel which is normally a great big hoop thing we've made ours out of pallet wood. I start at the bottom by using very very big pieces of pallet wood this is probably three inches square and some of these are three by two they're the actual stretcher bearers that are on the larger pallets because this is going to take a bucket load of weight and the reason that I've raised it off the deck like this is because of the little bunny rabbits that come around here and could be eating our lettuces, tomatoes, whatever we want to grow in there. So we've raised it up off the ground, that allows a good bit of air circulation. We've put some plastic in the base there to try and retain a little bit of moisture inside, but obviously 
any excess rain is going to run out of here. But hang on, guys. It's going to, well, is there going to be any excess rain? Because we have this plastic here. We can roll this back. We can actually access the entire bed here. We've sieved it all using a Victorian sieve here. Well, it looks Victorian to me. I've had it 50 years, I should think. I think it belonged to my grandfather. Probably his father as well. But basically we've sieved all the stones out of it, all the bits of tree roots, got our base soil in there, and then from a different area, we've gone and got some peat. So this is very, very fine peat here, look. This is good stuff. And basically, we're also gonna make some compost to go in here as well. Now the reason, let's put that down there, that we've actually placed this here, is because those of you who watched the early um, pallet cabin build will remember that we came actually with a compass and directed the base here south facing. Oh, that sunshine is something else. We won't have it tomorrow, that's for sure. So we decided to build this here. So, over goes the plastic sheet held by this weight of wood. We also don't have to bend down, strain our backs, if we're gonna do any weeding or anything like that. The plastic over the top retains the moisture, keeps the temperature up, and hopefully keeps the deer from getting their noses on our lettuces, or whatever we grow, in fact. And this piece of plastic, yes, is also free. This was, well, it was covering a new mattress that Mike had, delivered to his house. I thought, that's pretty tough plastic, guys. I've got a use for that. I knew exactly where I was gonna put it. We also put a ridge along the top here so we don't have a flat piece of plastic that the rain can fall on. Put a big bell in it, too much weight from the rain, it'll split the plastic. So, we've got a ridge here, the water can run off the side. Now, when you first looked at it, you might've thought, my God, what are they making? It looks like, a coffin. And this one's large enough to be what we call a coffin twofer. That's right. It can take two for one. It's the discount you get from the totally awesome, well, outdoor show and perhaps coffin makers. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Well, we've uh, had a good, good bit of decent weather, haven't we? Really, we had that. A bit of downpour. Yeah, bit of bit of rain, and we had a load of snow melt here. Mm. And the thing is, guys, it's coming back apparently, isn't it? Yeah, the beast from the east is due to come back mm. to the UK and bring more snow, which is very late in the year now for snow, isn't it? We have had snow yeah. in April before. Yeah, dusting, dusting. Yeah, dusting. This, this is, is going to be sub-zero apparently. Yeah, so uh, that'll be interesting if that actually appears or not. Going to talk about this later in theory time, but first... Theory time, guys, theory time yeah. is back. We yeah. are bringing back theory time. Who remembers theory time from the old videos? Some of our very old loyal subscribers will remember theory time, which we placed right at the end of the video, and it would be anything wacky, crazy theory that we, we would come up with, mm. and we'd actually get the input from you guys on what your opinions were on it. It's just an opinion thing, isn't it? There's a chance for everyone to just pour out their opinions on what they think of this certain theory. I think they asked when we did the last cabin unboxing one about a couple of three back, didn't they? Were they wanted theory then. time back, yeah. Talking of unboxing, people out there, <laughs> I haven't got an unboxing. I've got me a man's one. I've got me an unbottling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that in the sense that I know there's loads of craft beers out there and loads of IPAs, and I do like them. I mean, that's you know that's probably going to be a really nice one, but I personally love my real ales, my craft, yeah, you know, yeah. the, the, the sort of cask ales, traditional cask ales. That's what I really, really like. Um, things like your Doom Bar, you like Hobgoblin. Yeah. Um, Betty Stoggs is Betty. a wonderful lady. If you ever get a chance to have a drink of Betty Stoggs. Betty Stoggs is good, yeah. Hogs, right. Hogsback Tea. Yeah. Um, what else is there? That, that's my sort of ales anyway. The real ales, the malt, kind of maltier ones. Look, tell well. these people out there, we're not alcoholics. No. I mean, my wife has a glass of wine at night. Yeah. I'm not drinking 10 bottles or 52 cans. I just like the occasional bottle or a pint in the pub, like normal people do, and a bottle of beer. Mm. Whatever, we've had a hard day's work. Why shouldn't we reward ourselves? <laughs> don't shoot, don't shoot, Pads. I'll pay you, I'll give you anything you want. That had so much pressure on it. That's your one. Oh, great, I think that's been fermented. <laughs> I'm slightly nervous. Oh, that's better. Well, that wasn't too bad. Your one just exploded. I feel that the stomach ache is coming. <laughs> It's not the coffee. Yeah, it's hold on, hold on. The subscriber oh, yeah. toilet roll oh, is we got it. <laughs> we got it, yeah. It's there for you, Dad, just for you. Get it poured properly. Get a nice head to it. Well, Dad, that's... that's <laughs> Do you perfect. want any beer with that foam? That's perfect, that is. 
<laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I would not want you serving me in a pub, Dad. Cheers, mate. anyway. Cheers, mate. Nice bit of work. Another today. project done. Another pallet mm. work project done. So here we go. This is the first theory time of 2018. I think it is. It's been possibly eight months, maybe, since the last theory time. I'd say about a good eight, six to eight months. No, no not really. Yeah, it? yeah, definitely over six months. So theory time is back, and it's over to Dad this time for this week's theory time. It's to do with something I've thought of for the last five, six years. Now, when you have a picture of the globe on the map in the UK, our weatherman shows, I call them loops. That's a high pressure in the winter. Now, high pressure in the winter in the northern hemisphere means cold weather, it's clear, it's freezing, it's frosty. Then you get low pressure, which in the winter is mild. Could be, and we're in a moist, what's the airstream we're in? Maritime climate. Maritime yeah. climate we're in, that's right. So these loops have been coming down with a jet stream like this, up and down. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It is not, do not laugh. <laughs> it is not somebody's birthday cake. <coughs> so here is not a current cake with icing on top. This is my version of the planet Earth. <coughs> Here's a circle. <laughs> It's not that bad. I, I did go to school all there long, but I went to school. It looks like a Christmas pudding that, that, that kids draw. <laughs> right, believe it or not, the equator goes across the middle of our planet, but it's not quite. Maybe I have one of those beers and I drink too low. <laughs> there it is, right? These are the loops. Here up is the Arctic. There's England, obviously America. That's uh, England. That, that's England. <laughs> that's Black Blocks, England, okay? Just to give a generalisation. Sure. But you've got here the cold air in blue, the warm air in red, okay? Now these come around for the years and years and years in what I call loops. They come down in a loop like that. The cold air comes down, a huge loop goes over, what, sort of Nova Scotia area, northeast coast of America, around there, and they get some bad weather, and ha have indeed had some bad weather this last winter, as we have. Then it comes up with a warm loop, which is the Gulf Stream, okay? It's actually called the North Atlantic Drift, which is a finger of the Gulf Stream, and that's warm. Then it comes down, and we're on the edge of that finger of the Gulf Stream, the finger of the North Atlantic Drift. It goes up and down across, Aus well, not Australia. It does the same in the reverse in Australia, but it goes up here towards Russia, okay? So cold air at the top, it drops down in loops, and you've got all these loops. Now, what's happening, the ice caps are melting through global warming caused naturally or man-made. Whatever choice, you want to think. Whatever yeah. you want to believe, the choice is yours. It is, it's, is, it's going on, isn't it? Let's face it. So my worry always was that one day, these loops are gonna collapse down, bring cold in here, because the ice caps are melting. Think of a glass of water at whatever temperature it is, the ambient room temperature. Drop an ice cube in it, which is the, the ice flows melting, that temperature will go down. So what's happening is all this fresh water is coming off the Arctic, Antarctic, both, both directions, both ends of the poles, and what it's doing is cooling the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream is changing, therefore I think these loops are going to change into this. Again, okay, England. But <laughs> as you can see... Those loops have collapsed. The warm can't come up. There is too much cold. We're going to have more, I believe, of these sort of, I'm going to call them beasts from the east, mini ice ages. Because once those loops start collapsing, then I believe that will be so cold, it will be hard for the warm weather to come up here. What are your guys? That's Graham's theory. I generally, generally believe that theory. We want to know your opinions in the comments section, guys. Get so them down. I'm talking about low pressure here, warm, high pressure there. They move around on the jet stream, but over the last few years, more and more, they've been collapsing over northern Canada, over you know the states, the northern parts of the states, all the way across, across Russia, across Siberia, they've been collapsing. Um, my argument is, once this warm bit in between America and the UK there, that collapses, that's going to leave that great big piece of blue there going to be very, very cold. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. Hope you've enjoyed our little uh, pallet wood project here. If you're interested in general DIY projects and recycled, well, pallet wood projects. We've done a whole playlist on the cabin build, everything we've done at the cabin, everything we've built, there's a whole playlist. I think this is episode 10, maybe. Um, I'll pop a link in the video description to that playlist so you can see everything that we've done. Thanks again to Audible for sponsoring this video. Don't forget your free 30-day trial and free audio book. There's a link in the video description below. And don't you dare forget, theory time. I wanna know what you think about my, no, not that current cake. I wanna hear your theory about what on earth is happening to our weather patterns. We will see you soon in the next episode of the Palawood Cabin Build.